and again, I'll, I'll start out with prayer and with some prayers. And then uh, as the spirit leads you, uh, speak out from that standpoint. We'll just take our time and in silence, there is a moment for prayer too. So whether you're praying out loud or silently, God hears your prayers. We'll allow that to take place. Any questions? Let's begin with prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this day, Lord. I particularly, Lord, uh, give you thanks and praise for the blessings that you have given to me, Lord. And how you have maintained my health, and spiritually especially, but also physically. I thank you. I praise you for that. I thank you for my family. I, I thank you, Lord, to hear from my sons and daughters this past week just to have that conversation with them, Lord. I pray, Lord, that uh, you would just bless us in our study this day and help us and teach us how to use this gift of prayer. Lord, uh, one of the things that's on my mind right now is will there be a change in the laws of abortion in America. Lord, you, you know what's going on in our country. You, you know the division that's there. And, and yet after 50 years, Lord, by your grace, by your mercy, there, there could be that change. And we just pray, Lord, that you would lead those in charge to make that change, to outlaw abortion, to recognize that baby in the womb as a child of yours. Lord, I was reading an article about Finland, knowing that the leaders of our Lutheran churches, they were being in charge of proclaiming your word as, uh, as truth. But they were found not guilty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for watching over your leaders of your church. Thank you for the pastors, the faithful pastors you provide in all of our churches, Lord. Keep them faithful, Lord. Watch over them. Keep them strong physically as well as spiritually. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Look, I, I was reading a passage today. Uh, it struck me as simple. Uh, don't think that you will have any difficulty in your life every day, but take hold of God's hand. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would watch over and bless the people of the Ukraine. I pray you would sit there your angels, your guardian angels there to, to keep the human soul. Your name. Lord in your mercy. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the great physician. And I pray that you would be with Karen's family that's suffering from COVID and my daughter who's suffering from COVID. And I pray that you would be with Pastor Mark to renew his spirit as he's gone this week and to be heal him body, mind, and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Mother, 
song in my prayer this morning that we came here at the Detroit service and just joy that just came out of the couch. It's one of his answers mine. If you can please find it in your heart. Hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, thank you that uh, step granddaughter graduated from college this weekend, this last weekend, that Susie and the family could make it all get there to Colorado to some ceremony and celebration and get home safely. And uh, we just thank and praise you for all that. And we just pray that you guide Gracie in getting the right job and doing your will on that. And uh, Lord, we thank you for this weather too, and that uh, we get some things done outside. And it just feels good not to have to put on the coats and all that stuff to go outside. Thank you for that blessing. With us all times and good and bad, and we just praise you for that. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we pray now that you would be with us in our study as once again we turn to the book of Psalms and see the prayers that are listed there and go through them and recognize that uh, they are so meaningful to us even now and of this day, written thousands of years ago. Bless us with your presence, bless us with your Holy Spirit may not only be instructed, but be made stronger in our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Hey, thank you. We're on Psalm 100. I want to go to Psalm 100 this morning, or this afternoon. This group of psalms in the last several weeks that we've been on are, are basically entitled under the heading in the wilderness. And it's in that wilderness, in that place that we don't really know what could happen or what could take place. It's a strange place and all, but it's, it's a place to ask God to be with us. It's also a place to recognize what a gracious our God is from that standpoint. Psalm 100 is, is a psalm that speaks of God's steadfast love for us in all of our situations. Not just when the sun is shining and it's a perfect 75 degrees, but all the time. All the time from that standpoint. So it's a very short psalm. It's a psalm that perhaps some of you might recognize that it's very similar to, again, part of our worship service as we see it and as we've heard it. Psalm 100 says, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with the singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. 
Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. What are some of the things that you see in there that strikes you or, or touches a note with you in terms of what the psalm has to say? Number three, it is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep. Okay. Yeah. We are his. Okay. What does that mean? If you're his people, if you're. He made us. He made us. And he, he, he has, and is with us always. Always, yeah. He, 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 and if he made us, what does that really mean? <laughs> if he made us, what does that really, what does that mean when you make something? Well, he wanted us. Yeah, he, he wanted us. It's, it's his special creation. You're special to him. It's, it's like I said, something that you make, something, uh, you know, you bring forth a child, <laughs> you know, that, that child isn't just something to sit on a post somewhere. This is your child. And you don't care what others think because it's your child. And this is the same God who tells us and who we can be assured he loves us no matter what. He made us. We are his people <coughs> from that standpoint. It's a, such a simple thing, but it's so profound to understand. You know, when, when somebody creates a, 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 an art or creates a, a, a quilt or whatever, there's pride in that. There's pride in the way that came out and how it is and what it says to somebody else. And that it's going to somebody's place, going into somebody's lap to keep them warm, you see. But that also means that the parent of this child, like, girls know how to pray. We as people have a big importance in this little baby's life that we show them how God is good. Sure, sure. Because I was thinking about baptism. I mean, we, we are baptized at the time that our baby is baptized. We have to do that or don't have to. If you want them to have a good life, you have to be baptized each time because they don't they don't comprehend anything at that age. And it tells us, too, that, you know, we may look at somebody else and say, well, you're not worth much because we judge them that this is the creation of God. Why did God create this person just for us to criticize? I don't think so. Maybe we need to be the one to make a change in somebody's life. Maybe we might be the first one to say and wish them a good morning or a good afternoon because nobody has ever said that to them in their lives. That's why they have a grumpy face. <laughs> yeah. Anything else, something else that you see in that song? I like the part, just that very first verse, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Yeah. It, it, I think it's all the, the Christian religious all over the world that somehow these are instruments or they use from Africa, they're special things or, and that that's all joyful to the Lord. It might not be the way we do it, but it's, it's I'm just singing. The, the singing, the, and just that 
It might sound like noise to us, but to God, it's beautiful. And sometimes it's our voices too, and we squeak and squawk. <laughs> and it's beautiful to him too. Yes, sure. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> you know. How many times you say, well, don't ask me to sing, or I can't do this or that, you know, and yet, you know, God didn't say we had to sing in tune. He just said, make a joyful noise. Go ahead, let, let it come out. Let it come from the heart. Let it come from the soul. Make that good, good. I like the added part, all the earth, which yes. is maybe not necessarily people. Yes. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Because he did make the whole earth. He did make the earth. The animals, all of the other noises that come, the, the wind that comes through the leaves. It's not the wind that makes the noise, it's the leaves that makes the noise. Yeah. This particular psalm from our liturgy is part of the uh, post-communion response that we sing. So it's part of that particular verse there that uh, is from our liturgy. So what we sing is thank the Lord, sing his praises. That's, that's all taken from that particular aspect. <laughs> yes. She made a joyful noise. <laughs> Saved by the bell. <laughs> Saved by the bell. Verse five for the Lord is good. Steadfast love endures. Forever, forever. And it's faithful to all generations, not just one generation. Generation after generation after generation. How is it possible for some people to look and say the Lord is not good? Possible. Well, because of bad things. Through all that trauma that I'm still in, I thought one day, gee, I, I, I don't know why. But then I got myself a journal about everything I was thankful for. And I thought, I can't think of a lot of things. Well, I had that thing almost filled up. Mm-hmm. But, Little things that are nice. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's your, you need to call on him a lot more. Okay, yes, yes. And see the good that is there. Uh, it doesn't always come at once, and it doesn't come in one place, but it's there for, to see that it comes. You better. Oh, well, yeah, I was going to say something, because when bad things happen, and if they don't have a strong faith, then they're going to blame God that he's not good, because bad things happen. Well, and because, and we, because we, we, we talk in terms of God and goodness and love and all of those things, when we don't see that, then we say, well, God's not there, but he uses all of those things to help us in our faith walk, to make us aware from that standpoint. So, as we said last week, you know, being a Christian doesn't mean that all of a sudden everything is rosy and peachy mm-hmm. and it's full of flowers. It's not. Sometimes when bad things happen, it draws you closer to God. And yeah. for some people, it tears them away from God. Yes. It's yes. all their point of view. We have to really give and ask for God's help. And usually, what happens if, it, if, if something bad happens and it 
as Faith said, it draws the person away from God. What's really going on? What is, what is really going on in that person's mind? Instead of drawing them closer to God, he's going away. Yep. You got it's it. Satan. It's Satan. Yeah. It's, it's Satan working. He's allowing Satan to use him. And what is being really said, Satan is saying to him, you don't have to follow God's way. You do it your way. And if they don't follow it, that's too bad. So it sounds like, well, that's a winner. Why yeah, not do it? When you're making a decision, you, you want to think, is this man's way or is this God's way? Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. It's hard. The Bible speaks of doing the right thing. The Bible speaks all the time of doing the right thing. What is the right thing? <laughs> that's the struggle that we all come under. What is the right thing? God tells us what the right thing is. We just don't want to fit it in with our idea. The right thing is to love our enemy. No, I don't think so. <laughs> you see, that's how Satan, and then that's the falling away that takes place. Well, now, I, um, with this Ukraine this war. Mm -hmm. I've uh, and through this Bible study, I've got to where I'm 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 praying for Putin. Now when this all first started I wasn't <laughs> but now I feel like <clears throat> and, I, and it feels so funny to say uh Lord, I, 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 well, I do. I pray that he will change, change his mind. Yeah, change I this see. this man's heart. Sometimes, you know, and then not to follow through by saying, "But I know you won't," you know. Or, <laughs> he's not going to change. Yeah. You know? yeah. He's not going to change. Well, that's that's he the could. devil, you know, and, and we have to uh, we have to be stronger have our love and our strength in Christ and I mean it, you know I even at night when I say my prayers uh, I, I really have to kind of <laughs> make myself say please change his heart I look yeah. at Putin in his eyes sometimes while he's speaking and there's just nothing there. There's no compassion. We're only receiving. Yeah, that's for sure. One of the uh, first experiences I, I kind of had along that line as a pastor was you know, when I was in Missouri. And uh, this young gal, early 30s, working. Uh, and I had gone to visit her. She had asked me to come and wanted to talk to me. She said, and she, she was very upset with her work, very upset with the people that she was working for, particularly her boss, could not stand him. And she says, I just have these evil thoughts about him and everything else. I hate him. I don't want to work there. And yet I need a job. You know, all of these things, trying to rationalize it all through. And as I listened, I says, have you prayed about this? She says, yes, but nothing's changing. I says, well, let me be far more specific. She says, have you prayed for him? She looked at me, she says, you got to be kidding. <laughs> yeah. you know, that was shocking the first time I was asked that. I says, Bible tells us to pray for our enemies. It sounds like you have an enemy, but you're not praying. I never thought of that. I never thought that that would even come into play. I never, I said, that's part of the way God works. I says, I, I'm praying for some enemies in my life that are really big for me. 
ethnic or whatever you want to call it. I pray for them so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I and will then, continue, but they will change. The interesting thing is she came to me two weeks later and she says, all of a sudden the office seems to be different. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Okay. How our God works. He uses these simple things, puts things in our way, and yet teaches us, teaches us a better way and all. All right, any last minute thoughts on this one? If not, we'll go on to Psalm 101. Right. Thanks. Another one here that again, as we think about in the wilderness, sometimes the wilderness can be a lonely place, a place where there's nothing of anything there at all. This is a Psalm of David, verses one and two. I will sing of steadfast love and justice to you, O Lord. I will make music. I will ponder the way that is blameless. Oh, when will you come to me? What's going on in David's mind, do you think? wants to praise the Lord. Well, you have to be saying that steadfast love. Okay. He will sing no matter what happens. Yeah. He will sing steadfast love. He reminds of that, but, he but right feel like now. It's reciprocal, that God is, he, he's not feeling that God is listening, I guess, to us. So. Yeah, he says, I know this about you, but when will you come to me? <laughs> okay, I know that. And that's a lot of times what life hits us, isn't it? You know, I know you're a good God. I know you want the best for me. But when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? When am I going to feel that? The word justice kind of sticks out for me. Okay. I think that's what one of the problems when we think we have to feel God's presence. Um, and we do want to do it, at you know, and there are times we do feel it, but we don't, when we don't feel it, he's still with us. <laughs> I think we read all of two, did we? No, we just read Felicia. Right. Well, when will you come to me? I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. Well, I think it says walk with integrity if you made a hard decision that you know is right and other people see that you have, you can walk with integrity. Yeah, right. And again, I, you, you say a very direct point because he uses the word house, but that's translated really in my life, mm -hmm. my house, my life, that, that relationship is sometimes these poetic words, you know, again, we want to categorize that and say, well, in my house, but not outside. Well, in this case, in his house is his life and all of his life seeks that. Sometimes we're so consumed with the answer we want to our prayer. We are listening to the fact that he is answering. And that might have a lot to do, Jeannie, with what Sue brought up about justice. We know what God is doing is right and proper, and he has reason for it, but we're not thinking that. We just we're, see an evil man that means yeah, he's yeah, we're not we, We're not thinking that way. Because we want it again, that pride ourselves, we want it our way. Yeah. 
starting at verse three. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. I hate the work of those who fall away that shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. Whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. I will look with favor on the faithful in the land that they may dwell with me. That he may that they may dwell with me, but he who walks in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. No one who practices deceit shall dwell in my house. No one who utters lies shall continue before my eyes. Morning by morning, I will destroy all the wicked in the land, cutting off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. pretty scary stuff. That's pretty because everybody scary. would be dead. Yeah. Because we're all we're right. all we all we have, have deceit. We all you yeah. must be let them come into your house so that they can see that it's built believe you're doing something God makes it right instead of turning them out. But everyone's a sinner. Oh yeah. So okay. everyone could do one of these things that he's against. Well yeah that's why we should let them welcome them to our house. All of us. a response in this case. Here's a, a, I'm going to say a faithful response of how a person sometimes really feels. I want to take charge, Lord. I know you, you're in charge. I know your justice and all, but I want, I want to take charge now. I want to deal with what's in my life the way I want to do it. This, this, this is the part that comes this is the part where Satan comes into our lives. And, you know, just like we see in the Psalms, this is real life experiences. This is where David was at that time. He says, I know, Lord, you're the best. You're all this and that, but I am tired of all of the stuff that's going on. I am tired of it, and I'm going to make changes. don't come without the Lord's blessing. He puts that forth from that standpoint. Whoever has a body look and I'm not sure we probably all have that sometimes, but we have to look at Yeah. If the shoe fits. <laughs> the commentary for it. Say, did you see that look they had? You know, <laughs> they put in that in your mind, or did you see the way they did mm -hmm. that? Did you see how they dressed? I mean, yeah. Yeah. I didn't think of it before, but that's yeah, now you see it. Yeah, these, you know, as, as I read them, and I hope that you get the idea and the thoughts, and these are the everyday thoughts that sometimes we would suppress even ourselves and say, boy, I've got a nasty thought. But by the, if you've got the thought to express it, it's is probably even better because by expressing it, you, you get that out of your system, so to speak. And that's David, you know, through the Psalms showing us how that takes place and all of that. The commentary on this Psalm says this, 
No nation has the kind of political leaders described here. Even King David failed miserably as his many sins involving Bathsheba demonstrates. No nation has the kind of citizen described here. Even we in the church know we have not always been people of integrity. But Jesus was blameless, a man of perfect integrity. He comes to us with his royal and royal love, shown perfectly on the cross. He brings us into the one nation made blameless in Christ's blood. It's called the church, the people of God. We can't feel it in our body. And, and feel that, okay, for one denomination, we're the best one there is. That isn't the truth. So he doesn't want us being honest to be a Christian. We don't have to be what our neighbor is. First and foremost, we are Christians. First and foremost, we are Christians. Moving on to 102, right after that, okay? And again, these are not in any particular order of terms of life situations, but they're just numbered as such. Chapter 102, it's called a prayer of one afflicted when he is faint, faint meaning weak. He pours out his complaint before the Lord. Verse 1 and 2. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. Yeah. What's his move? I'm not bad with that, okay? What, what's David's mood at this point? He wants help right now. Right now. <laughs> Speedily. That's Speedily, yes. Yeah. So yeah. I call, I'll answer. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. Speedily. Ever have those moments? <laughs> the last yeah. line, answer me speedily the day I call. That's sometimes how you feel towards your kids. Like, what I was done yesterday. <laughs> very well. Very well. <laughs> was it like I had an aunt that asked my husband if he would do something for her? He's like, oh, yeah. And she said, when he had the time. And he waited he, two weeks. He hadn't done it yet. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, John. When, when old people, at, at that time, I was younger. <laughs> when old people ask you to do something, they, and they say, when you have the time, they mean today or tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> they, don't, yeah. they don't mean two weeks from yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah, it's very interesting how we handle it. Uh, we, we want to be gracious when you get the time, yeah. you know, we appreciate this. Put the little guilt trip on is what well, you're doing. Well, you got time for me. <laughs> yeah. It's part of part of the guilt trip, and it's part of saying I really want it that very soon. <laughs> But I'll let you choose the time. Unless it today goes past tomorrow. Today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Here we have that in a prayer form. Yeah, so you know, it's just we, how we, we are. We laugh at ourselves, but you know, this is where we are at times. This is where David was. Verses 3 to 11. And he goes on, he says, for my days pass away like smoke and my bones burn like a furnace. Think about those expressions. Pass away like smoke. Burns like a furnace. My heart is struck down like grass and has withered. I forget to eat my bread because of my loud groaning. You ever go without supper because you just don't feel like it? Because you're so sick of everything else that's going on. Okay. Part of verse, uh, verse six I am like a desert owl of the wilderness, like an owl of the waste places. I lie awake. 
am like a lonely sparrow on the housetop. All the day my enemies taunt me. Those who deride me use my name for a curse, for I eat ashes like bread, mingle tears with my drink. Because of your indignation and anger for you have taken me up and thrown me down. My days are like an evening shadow. I wither away like grass. It's the moon. You know, were, he's in a lonely place. Lonely place. Yeah. He's very depressed. Depressed. World's against him. <laughs> he's going to go out and eat worms. Except he can't even find the worms to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That standpoint. He talks about his misery. Okay. And again, my sisters in Christ, it's okay to talk about your misery. Okay. And it's good to talk about it. Find that person or just talk to the Lord about it. It's okay. He understands. He understands you. But he wants to hear from you. He wants to have that conversation. When you have that conversation, you'll be amazed at the grace and mercy that comes forth from all of that. Verse 12 to 17. Here he puts in the butt, okay? But you, O oh Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generations. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. For your servants hold her stones dear and her pity have pity on her dust. Nations will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth will fear your glory. For the Lord builds up Zion. He appears in his glory. He regards the prayer of the destitute and does not despise the prayer. So he's now moving, you see, as he goes through this lament. He's now moving to the recognition of who his Lord is. And after saying those number of words, he ends up his section. You don't regard the prayer. You don't disregard the prayer of the destitute. I know you're listening to me. You don't despise my prayer. In other words, you're not going to get mad at me because I'm feeling the way I feel. This is after David cries for help, talks about his misery, and now he calls on God to hear. Because he knows he will be here. Verse 18. 20 or 20. 22, I can get. Let this be recorded for a generation to come, so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. Then he looked down from his holy height from heaven. The Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners who set free those who were doomed to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise. When peoples gather together and kingdoms to worship the Lord, So what's it David acknowledging at this point? That everything that's gone on, God will use it for his glory for later generations. Okay? I don't 
know that that sits well with you or maybe even myself, but what happens in my life and how I react or don't react, God is using that, good or bad, for future generations because people are always watching us, aren't they? People are always watching. What are you going to do when trouble hits you? What do you do when good things happen? People are watching. So God is using us for future generations. Your children, your grandchildren are watching. How are you handling life's particular moments? How do I handle? Do my children see? What do my brothers and sisters in Christ see as we worship? You see, we we share in our problems, we share in our sicknesses, the things that we deal with. We think it's just about between God and me. No, between God and everyone else. He may be using us. What seems bad may now may turn into good. You will put you know a long length of time, whatever you thought was so bad may have a way of God does of turning that into good in your life. It doesn't seem possible. Yeah. Look for blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's blessing in disguise. It's the things that happen that we never think about or may never know about. Someday, <laughs> years from now, or maybe it's already happened where somebody that you know said, you know, I remember that time when such and such took place and you did this, or you did that, or you reacted this way. It's like, I didn't think it was a big deal, but damn it. That's what they recognize today. One of the guests worship yesterday was Dell and his granddaughter, one of our members. And she came up to me and said, Hi, Pastor Hansler. I said, I, I know you, but I don't know you. She says, you can turn me. She changed a little bit since then, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Two little children with her. Yes. She's up in front with the children's message with the two little ones. She, you know, that's that was the memory. You know, that was the memory. I thought, wow. That. That was what she remembered in our relationships. And I confirmed her. And she's still in the church. Praise God. Praise God. But we never know. We don't know that God can be using that, using that situation in our lives, how we react for generations to come to help them through their problems. Any other thoughts on that part? Verse 23, he has broken my strength in mint course. He has shortened my days. Oh my God, I say, take me not away in the midst of my days for in my days, you whose years endure throughout all generations. Of old, you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like the robe, and they will pass away. But you are the same, and your years have no end. The children of your servants shall dwell secure. Their offspring shall be established before you.
the psalmist here is basically giving a confession of God's eternity. Everything else is going to change. <laughs> We've lived 60, 70, 80 years, and we can attest things change. They're going to continue to change. We can all say, well, I wish it was like in the old days, but it ain't going to be. It's going to continue to change. But our God does not. He does not. He is faithful to himself. And so in the same way, he is faithful to us. God's eternal nature from that standpoint. So in this particular psalm, we see a, a man who is crying out for help, cries out for prayer, talks about his miserableness, talks about calling to the Lord, knowing that he hears, puts praise to the Lord, tells us of God's faithfulness and eternalness. So moves from one aspect all the way through in terms of that. It's like he's ready to start a new day, a new week, a new time together. That. Any other thoughts come to your mind? Psalm 104. This, again, has some tones of some of the other psalms. This is a longer psalm. It's entitled in my book here, it says, Oh Lord, my God, you are very great. Very great. Verse 1 starts out and says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. We've heard that numerous times, haven't we, in the Psalms? Bless the Lord, O my soul. O my self, all that is within me. Bless the Lord. Just a wonderful, wonderful way to start out and have that relationship with God. Bless me, Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. May everything in me give praise and thanks to God. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds and chariot. He rides on wings of the wind. He makes his messengers winds, his ministers a flaming fire. <coughs> this talks about the wonders of God. The wonders of God. Expressed in everyday terms, but yet have a great meeting. Verse 5, he set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be moved. You covered it with the deep as with the garment, and the water stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. The mountains rose, the valley sank down to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that may not that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. Beside them, the birds of the heavens dwell. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. 
the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. What did we learn here about our God? Well, he made everything good, but did man, I mean, change it all so it becomes so confused and so horrible? I mean, what happened to this wonderful world? So, good question to ask. Rings are drying up, trees are causing forest fires. What, what happened? What did we do? Sin. They <laughs> saw when sin entered the earth, it changed everything that went on. Only man did it. They were sinful. They took away our wonderful world. You think there were fires in the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. Probably, but. You think there were floods in the Old Testament? Yes, there were. <laughs> You think there were storms in the Old Testament? But were they destroying their world back then? The, the sin? Just, oh, just, just like now. Pretty terrible, that's <laughs> And it's like, so sad to see our world like this. Well, it is. But who made all of that? I guess the devil with the sin. And he got well, man. the devil, the devil brings sin about, but God allows that to take place, and He allows that to take place for why? His benefit. For His benefit, and really for our benefit, that we would be drawn closer to Him. That's that's what the psalmist is writing about to recognize. You can talk all you want about all of the climate changes, and all of these things that are taking place and all of that. Certainly they are. But can God change any of that? Is God in control of that? Or are we in control of that? Have you done that? There are people who think we're in control. But I've yet to see a weatherman have two days in a row that he was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I could remember listening to the news one time. They said, well, we'll have some scattered showers, yeah, snow. And it was like, oh, my gosh, we got like 10 inches. It's, oh, it's not going to be scattered. anything big. And I'm like, what? Step outside the studio here. <laughs> it's the only job you can get that you can be wrong on every day. <laughs> you paid for it. Well, and you paid for we, it. Exactly. When they say it's partly cloudy versus today, it's partly sunny. Well, they say it's partly cloudy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, then you can't be wrong. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> well, what can we do about what man is doing? Pray. Pray. Tell others about Christ. Pray. Take, take care of, of it as much as we can, knowing that God has made it, created it. Do those things that are right, but, but when it comes down to it, our God is in control. It's his creation. It is his creation from that standpoint. Could he be testing to see who is the most of the Who's in it for the long haul? And who's just doing it for show and believing in him? It, it, it could be, it may not be. You know, I guess we'd have to just wait and see the wisdom of the Lord in that and see see what comes of it from that standpoint. Because I know myself, I've wavered, but it's always managed to bring me back. On the right path, there's some that you know they will never <coughs> follow that path. It's it, um, we have to be careful, and I, you know, we have to be careful if we consider that God has created and is in charge of us this creation in total, then 
how much can we be effective other than through prayer in terms of all of that? And in, spite, in, in other words, uh, in spite of all the things we can do wrong, he can still make something good of it, and make something happen. But, but he is God, we aren't God, and neither are the experts or anyone else from that standpoint. And we're forgetting, we know the end of the story. Yes. You know, yeah. God loves us and planned for this all along, and the earth will be destroyed someday. And we personally don't have to worry about that. Well, you do have to worry about the present day. I mean, well, I mean, I'm not saying that, but like what he was saying about, you know, how we can pray, but we don't know God's plans or his will specifically because well, he doesn't tell us that, but we know that in the end, God wins. It must be miraculous and people can stay inside their houses and blown over by a tornado and think those thoughts. It has to be I'm not saying we like it. <laughs> no, I know that, but I mean it has to be very difficult. I agree. I don't know if you caught on to one of the changes in terms of the COVID pandemic that we've gone through in the last couple of years, but remember the first <laughs> 12 to 18 months, everything was science. Mm -hmm. The science tells us. The have you heard the word? All, have it you was heard, wrong a lot, wasn't it? Yeah. And have you heard the word science for the last six months or so? Not really. No. no. Not, I, I haven't heard it. I haven't heard a word about science. When, the, when these professionals talk, well, we expect or, or we think this will happen. But never do you hear the word science says this. I and had, I had one on a TV. Recently? Yeah. Okay. Well, All right. well I, part of the reason is because science proves that there's only men and there's only women <laughs> and they don't want to accept <laughs> that at all. I mean, what's I mean, what do you call the DNA and, you know, yes. X's and Y's? I mean, there isn't another sense. And the same there. with abortion. They want it to be, well, life doesn't begin at conception. Except, isn't that sad? I, what I don't understand about the abortion thing is if I'm, you know, three weeks pregnant and somebody kills me, then, then the person who kills me can be yeah. charged with right. two counts of murder. But yet, if I decide to have an abortion, that's a different story. That's different. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Yeah. And some in some courts, because now, you know, if, if there is an abortion taken that where a crime is committed, then you can be charged for two crimes. The killing of the person plus the child. <laughs> it's um, it's only you know. <laughs> and that and that's it's the confusion. Me. Yeah, that's the confusion that comes about when man puts in mind what he thinks is right because it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. There's always a complication along the way. And when you have a complication, you then try to straighten it out by writing more laws and writing more this and exceptions and all of that. The end result is we need to go back and see what this God said. Let's go on to verse 14. David is speaking of God. He says, you cause the grass to grow for the livestock, plants for man to cultivate that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, bread to strengthen man's heart. Think of those types of things. That's what we have today, don't we? I mean, we have wine and 
it's kind of thought as like flattening of the heart, something that makes us <laughs> feel good. Enough of it. Oil. <laughs> you guys use oil on your faces, creams, all of that. Yeah. Well, it's not. That, it's not new a lot stuff. Of that are in the oil that we never really realized that it's. It's, it's oil not new at all. Bread to strengthen us. Food. Things haven't really changed. Maybe the names change a little bit. Things really haven't changed. Verse 16, the trees of the earth of the Lord are watered abundantly. The cedars of Lebanon that he planted. And then the birds build their nests. The stork has her home in the fir trees. High mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks for our, our refuge for the rock badgers. Still the same. Still the same. Well, the birds are putting this together now and getting ready to have little ones. Verse 19, he made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's time for setting. He made darkness and it is night and all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they steal away and lie down in their dens. And goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose and Some basically <laughs> doesn't change. It doesn't change. Everything has stayed in motion. Stayed there. Happening the same way. And I think that, you know, because of all of the changes we do experience and are so uh, made aware of today that we think that, you know, nothing's the same anymore. But the basics of life are are the same all the time. However, whether it's true because growing up, we always went to the same place sort of to tell us. And I can remember Big Beach. A couple years later, when we got up there, they had to take the first two cabins out. Because the water, right. and now they see it, oh, the world, and then, oh, the, the world, now you can just on beach. <laughs> and, 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 and now it's beach again, and later, it, oh. yeah. well, it, the Great Lakes, so many times, they're like, oh, they're losing all the water, and the, the, it's so low, it's so low, it's so low, now it's like, it's so high, it's, it's so, so high, high. <laughs> and that's fun. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That, and, and that's, you know, that's where we have to re remind ourselves that, you know, we get so frustrated. But People science get so doesn't upset. say that. <laughs> but what? Science isn't saying that. No. It's the end of the world. Actually, it's when the scientists start messing with that, that we probably work. <laughs> yeah. more, more, I mean, than, more times than not. When, it's not when, to do that. When man starts to mess with God's creation, things go awry. I, I think that man can change the architect of something that controls water or takes away from the water. It wasn't the way it was made when God was creating the world. Mm -hmm. So I can see where Bill again, man might be responsible for a lot of that. Absolutely. And they know it when they're doing it. That's, that's this will cause this to happen. I, I truly believe that. It caused a lot of our own problems. That certainly is a, a very real possibility in all of those situations that basis. And that's why, again, we, we have to take, <clears throat> take a look at and be cognizant of what did God intend? What does our Lord intend? Well, he's going to take care of us regardless of what our environment is like, I guess. 
verse 24. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works in wisdom have you made them all. That's a profound statement, isn't it? In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the sea, great and wide, which teems with creatures innumerable, living things both small and great. There go the ships and the Leviathan, which you form to play in it. Land and the sea, God, part of. doesn't happen by chance, by God's direction. Verse 27, these all look to you to give them food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. This becomes for David a confession, an actual confession. And that confession states that God knows what he's doing. God knows what he is doing. And our job is to find out and to learn more from God on that basis. I'm working with a congregation right now that's in the midst of a call to call a new pastor. Their pastor retired a year ago and so they're looking for a new pastor. You know how hard it is to teach them that God knows who is going to come to be their next pastor. And it's their job to figure it out who God wants. But we want to pick the one we want. I says, but you can do that. But you have to understand, God will tell you which one you want. the person you think is the perfect person, but if that person says no, it must not have been the one God wanted. But then the pastor has to think, is this a church that needs me? Am I going for the wrong read? You know, because it has what I want. So it works both ways. <laughs> it works both ways. Yeah. Sure. It works both ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. For the good of all churches well, that God puts into that pastor's mind, he's got that extra call, and do I stay where I'm at, or do I move to another place? You know, what's best you know, for himself, for the Lord, for the kingdom, all of those things. But something's going to take place, and something happens, but it'll be the right thing, and it will be ultimately God's choice not the people's choice it's, that becomes a criteria and becomes a you know a main part of every congregation you know, we're in that process several years ago all the past you know, I was like how do you know which one is the right one right. you know and, we go in different directions, but this does this, and this, this does that, he does these, and all of that, you know. We put our faith in God. We continue to ask God to direct and guide us and lead us. This is, this is the result of it. So this is David's confession. Verse 31, he ends up this psalm. <clears throat> Listen closely how he ends up this beautiful song. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. 
will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. It's the psalmist ends end this. The hope is still there. I mean, we have to pray for it. And we have to believe in, in our Lord to take care of it. That the Lord will take care of it. And he said, may the Lord rejoice in his works, not my works. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We think, well, you know, it's his works, it's the Lord's works that come about. What he, what he wants it to happen. One who looks at the earth and, and it trembles, it thunders, and it lightens, and it rattles, and it roars. This is what the Lord intends. This is what we're seeing through. Tornadoes, and hurricanes, and earthquakes, and all of that stuff. Touches the mountains and they smoke. Lava coming out from all of them. Is, is this a change in the atmospheric pressures and all of this, or is this the Lord's? Says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have thee every day. Every day. To end with the commentary on this whole song is this more and more we hear about nature with no mention of the Creator. Visit a museum, read a science textbook or watch a nature program, and you will see everything explained as some incredible long process by which all life has evolved into what we see today. Yet God is indeed creator of all. He continues to care for his world. Remember the word Jesus spoke over a violent storm when he said, peace, be still, and all was calm. Even death cannot compare to God's power as the stone obeyed his command and rolled away the tomb on Easter morning. So let it be, Lord. So let it be. What an awesome God we have. God who cares for us and loves us. God who cares for all of his creation. All of it. Every bit of it. The worst part, the bad part, all the things that we don't like about it. But, you know, he cares. He knows what's happening. How do we, as faithful people, not only make the best of the situation, but give him praise and glory and honor? Serve the Lord, my sisters. Serve the Lord. Last thoughts, comments? Well, we'll end with that one then. And let's close with prayer. Lord God, thank you for this time together. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us how you love your creation, how you love us as part of that creation. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would teach us to put our trust and our faith in you and in all the circumstances of life. When life becomes difficult, when life is good, when life is oh hum, and maybe when life is showing its last sign of life for us. Be with us, Lord. Grant us faith. Grant us hope. Grant us newness of life each and every day, Lord, as 
you would guide us, direct us, help us to be the type of people that you would have us be. Help us to share in the generations to come what you have taught us so that they too may know you as Lord and Savior. We come to you this day of thanksgiving with a heart that is grateful and thankful and with the words of our Lord Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. By the way, just to give you a little bit of an idea in terms, we will be meeting just for the next two Mondays, and then we're going to take a, a summer break. Okay. Uh, yes. While well, someone's gone up north. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Pastor is going to take that same break too. So uh, so through the summertime, we will not meet as such okay. on that basis. So we'll Sweet. meet for the next Hold two on. weeks. Close out our session with the study on Psalms. And we'll look forward to getting back together in the fall again. All right. Thank you. You're back. Thank you. Karen, you got to stop the recording. We didn't put down the alternate. If somebody dies, right?